stakeholder initiative that focuses on transforming the state of mental health uh, policies and practices um, globally. And currently we are in five major cities, um, that is Nairobi in Kenya, um, Seattle and Sacramento in the US, Bogota in Colombia, and Chennai in India, and currently looking to recruit other cities um, as we have currently launched a program called Centered Cities that is a global movement for inner development and collective well-being. So there's something I want us to recognize that um, I'm going to speak a little bit different. That mental health is not just an isolated issue. It is an integral part of well-being. And I think one of the most amazing uh, approaches of Cities Rise is how do we focus on the paradigm shift from the clinical to, the, to a public health holistic approach. So what does that mean? That we're not only focusing on treating mental ill health uh, in, uh, sorry, symptoms, but we are shifting to how uh, we have holistic approaches that are informing overall mental well-being. So one of the things that um, Cities Rise focuses on is what I'm talking about from clinical aspects to shifting more on promotive and preventative actions, and this is a public health approach, and um, focusing on individuals in a social and environmental factors, which I'm going to talk about in the next slides, and um, how do we also focus on that mental health issues or mental health center is not only being driven by professionals and experts, but approaching a more and traditional approach where we are focusing on collective action on everybody in the society. And then uh, for the longest time, young people have been, you know, you know, an intervention and we're supposed to follow it, you know? But how do we look as young people, as change agents? We're including them in research, we're including them in policies and all other aspects on affecting them. And then the other thing is also how do we view communities as centers of transformation where innovations are coming from, you know? We have discovered so many innovations coming from communities. Currently we have two gathering spaces in Mukuru and Huruma. And these gathering spaces are focusing on, you know, good approaches, art-based approaches, you know? How do art-based approaches, uh, you know, inform the inner, inner being of a human being? How does it inform inner growth? And you know, when we have inner growth, then it, you know, it goes to the outer change. And then the other thing is also, um, for the longest time also, most mental health organizations, and not only mental health organizations, but developmental sectors, because mental health is, you know, it cannot be something that is just a standalone. There are various factors which are affecting mental health. So we've been working in silos, but how do we form a collective action of various developmental sectors to inform mental health and well-being? Um, yeah, so these are just um, aspects that Cities Rise is focusing on, the research and innovation, learning and accelerator platforms where uh, we work in collaborations with Grand Challenge Canada. Grand Challenge Canada identifies innovators that they fund, and after that Cities Rise comes in um, to connect the innovators together, to learn from each other, um, and also to connect them to experts and professionals um, who are key in helping them, um, you know, uh, sustain their projects. And then the Mental Health Friendly City Movement, which has recently changed to Centered Cities. Um, it was launched in London last month on the World Mental Health Day. And just like I said, the Centered Cities is a movement that is focusing on inner development of young people and the collective well-being. 
Ah, the next one. The next one. Oh, this side. So, uh, I'll just, just leave it there. So, in Nairobi, we have, and not only in Nairobi, but also in the other cities, but I'm going to focus on Nairobi. We have two very incredible projects, that's the Youth Gathering Spaces, and we have the Youth Leaders Network, where I started in. David is in the Youth Leaders Network. Um, and the Youth Leaders Network mainly composes of young people who are at the forefront of inspiring dialogues in various aspects in mental health, such as um, policy and research. And David has been really key in um, advising our research projects um, in Nairobi and also globally. Yeah, the next one, because I've spoken about this. Oh, there's, a, there's one that is missing, but that's fine. So, um, so there's one thing that um, I want to talk about. This, um, we are always talking about holistic approaches, and this is a public health approach, but what exactly is holistic approaches, you know? For example, like what I've talked about, the arts and culture. How does arts and culture inform mental health? And clearly that arts and culture is an innovation that is really coming from young people. And then the sectors of education, how can they help us inform mental health and well-being? Um, for example, um, there's a project we're currently doing, funded by the Templeton Foundation, that um, we are working on inner development and using the character strengths, gratitude, kindness, and hope, um, you know, to inform the inner, inner growth of young people between 12 and 14 years. So there's also the aspect of nutrition, you know? How does nutrition, um, you know, inform mental health? There's also the aspect of services and care. Are they friendly to the community? Are they acceptable? Are they quality? And how do we measure that? So this is what I'm talking about, the aspect of collective action. And uh, not saying that completely, that we move away from the clinical aspect, because we cannot do that with mental health. But there's an, uh, there's an interface between the clinical and public health approaches. How do we develop systems in our countries and globally that are focusing on you know, overall well-being, rather than just focusing on us treating, um, you know, the illness itself. Um, and there's a very big potential with uh, young health workers who are here and who are there globally to be change agents for this. I know that health workers are trained um, in, yeah, just take me back to Nairobi. <laughs> they the, the Nairobi. Young health workers are trained in the clinical aspect, but also how do we empower them to move from the medical approaches, just the medical approaches, um, you know, to nurturing their collaboration across different disciplines. So that means um, collaborating with education, collaborating in research, co collaborating in policies. How do we help the young health workers or how do we empower the young health workers to have voices also in the overall well-being? So um, this, uh, just like I've spoken about the uh, Youth Leaders Network. So one of the things that Cities Rise is key in believing is that we cannot design our programs just us, you know? We have to involve the young people. All our programs are co-designed by young people. So even our advocacy efforts in Nairobi, in Chennai, in Sacramento, Seattle, and all the other cities that we work in, these are ideas of young people. We do not at all come up with ideas. So for example, in 2022, we had the World Suicide Prevention Day uh, walk, and at the same time, we still had the art event that Dr. Nasri has talked about. But I'd like to take us back to 2019, where I met various um, youth advocates. Um, and this is the time that we felt like we were so tired, because all interventions that were coming up 
were either, you know, top top down approach. It was not bottom up. No one used to consult the young people on what do we really want, what are the challenges we are going through. And the one thing that the youth leaders um, came up with was a wellness walk or a march that was focused on advocacy and really asking the government to listen to young people. And very glad that for that particular event, we had budgeted for 500 people, but on the day day, 2,000 people showed up. And it was a very good thing because it contributed to the formation of the task force that Dr. Nasri was talking about. So these are just some of the events that Cities Rights provides a platform for young people to come up with. Um, this is our uh, one of the workshops that we hosted um, back in 2021, and we don't use the normal methods of lectures. We have interactive sessions with the young people. So this is also in Chennai, India, um, of them having their World Mental Health Day event, and for them, the one thing they focus on is art, music, sports, and all other art-based approaches that they feel is necessary for their context. So the other thing is that what works in Nairobi, or the other thing that we really face the challenge with, is that what works in Nairobi might be similar to Chennai because we're in the global south, but it might not be similar to the US, you know? They're different contexts. So most of the time we have to adapt to um, what that particular context uh, wants. So that is Bogota, and this is the Secretary of Health, and this was um, the day that the Youth Leaders Network in Bogota was being launched. And this is uh, part of uh, Seattle and Sacramento in the US, uh, where uh, they had an event called Poetry in the Park, and they used poetry to create awareness and also for self-expression. So, um, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.